All right. It's five, Should we get started? It's 530, so mm -hmm. we're going to get started. Welcome to the Paralegal and Civil Law Society meeting today, our internship panel and information session. Um, unfortunately, our president, Charlie, is sick today, and Sydney is not able to make it, so I'm going to be running the meeting. So please bear with me. This is not a usual thing that I do. Ooh. So um, we have with us here Rachel Yorison, if you want to squeeze in, and Micah Pearson, Way over here. <laughs> <laughs> and Gwen, who is our program director and one of our professors and a general support system for everybody in the program. She's an angel. So um, she's going to get us started. Ms. Professor Dendaway is going to be monitoring the chat. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to put them in there. Um, once Gwen finishes with the information about the internship, we'll be here to answer any questions. All of us are active interns right now in our final semester. So we're happy to answer questions about what it's like for us, um, any pros and cons, what the application process was like, things like that. All right, I'm going to hand it off to, to you. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, you go ahead and start. So I, um, I think we got a general introduction, but Gwen has been with the program since 2013. Mm -hmm. She's got over 25 years of teaching experience. So you guys to take advantage of the, um, the wealth of knowledge that she brings to the program. And as uh, Tiffany has stated, that Gwen is a, just a, a wonderful leader. So I um, really appreciate being under her, her direction. So with that, um, Gwen, you want us to tell us about um, what is, can you give us an overview of what the internship program is? Sure, sure. So as I'm sure everyone knows, you have to take, depending on the catalog year you're in, uh, either 15 or 18 legal specialty elective courses, so 15 or 18 credits. And the internship is a four credit course that is one of the options you have to take um, as part of your required legal specialty courses. Um, I personally, but then I have a vested interest, I suppose, because I enjoy uh, teaching the internship, think it's a great opportunity for students to um, get their feet wet, if you will, in the real world. In other words, I think we have um, awesome instructors here who, who obviously work um, in the legal field, paralegals and lawyers, but um, I think it's another thing for students to take the knowledge that they've gained from their classes and actually apply it in, I like to say, a safe environment. And the reason I say safe is, you know, it's an internship. So of course, um, the sponsors, the attorneys and the law offices and the public agencies expect the intern to, you know, put their best foot forward, but it's also a safe spot for interns to learn and you know, sometimes make mistakes and and then put one foot back in front of the other and move forward. Um, the internship is also a wonderful opportunity to, um, like I said, gain experience, but make connections. Um, so interns, when they're working in a law office, and in particular, if it's a larger law office or a government agency are gonna be able to uh, meet many people, uh, not only their supervising attorney, but other paralegals, other office um, staff. And so to make those connections in the legal world, um, I think is invaluable, uh, not only for potential future jobs, but also for uh, potential job references um, for, you know, jobs that you as a student, once you graduate, want to apply for. Um, the other thing um, Professor Tondaway and I were just talking about are soft skills. Um, the internship, I think, is a great opportunity to see what a real law office is like and to practice some of those professional skills like writing emails, calling up clients or witnesses, um, you know, having conversations, discussions, whatever you want to call it, working with others um, in the legal field uh, that are involved with your case um, that you're working on. So we don't necessarily get a chance to practice a lot of those soft skills, the professionalism skills um, in our classes. Um, 
So that's a good opportunity to, to take that one step further. Um, the internship process is um, as outlined in the announcement I sent out last Friday, um, but basically it's designed for students in the last semester of their program, whether you're in the post degree certificate or the associate's degree. Um, and you have to have a 3.0 or higher GPA in paralegal courses only. So um, I know students sometimes with their AAS think, oh, I have to give you my GPA from the, the whole shebang, including the uh, general electives. Do you want to let in somebody? Oh, yeah. So Sydney is actually. Oh, Sydney's doing that. Okay. Um, so again, GPA is uh, 3.0 or higher um, in paralegal classes only. Um, what else? Last semester, uh, you also have to have taken certain courses, um, 202, um, writing, and uh, 104. So 202 is civil litigation procedures two which means you've taken <laughs> civil litigation procedures one, obviously, and you also have to have taken ethics. Um, for the AAS students, you have to have taken 45 credits out of your approximately 60 to 63 credits that are required. And for your post-degree certificate, you have to have taken 27 out of the 42 that are required. So, you know, it all relates back to your, you're in your last semester. Um, and the reason I, I can give you a little background, the reason it's your typically your last semester is because although it would be nice to get introduced or exposed to a law office earlier on, we also want to make sure when we match our students with the site that they have the skills um, and the knowledge to, to be successful in the internship. Because not only are we trying to benefit, of course, our interns, but we also want to have a, you know, a reciprocal benefit for the site. Um, and in fact, you know, I don't ever want to, uh, uh, what's the word, uh, leave people with the impression that this is a given, but you know, sometimes our interns are so impressive, um, they actually end up getting hired by the intern site. Um, but I'll state the disqualifier again, you know, not everyone gets hired at their intern site. Um, but again, one of the, the good things is that you still gain a lot of valuable experience, even if you're, you're not hired. Um, other than that, I think the one other requirement I left out is um, six units of legal specialty courses other than the internship also have to be completed. Um, so the process is, is pretty simple. Again, it's outlined in the document that I emailed uh, Friday and I think again on Monday. Um, Basically, students uh, send me just a simple email saying, hey, I'm interested in the internship and I'll be available for the meeting that we're going to have. I believe it's on the 18th. I hope I'm getting my dates right. The 18th, I hope, is a Friday of November. Um, but the, the information um, that I'll request once you send me your um, email saying you're interested and can attend the meeting will be filling out a short application. And that application basically asks you um, what areas of law you're interested in. Um, knowing what areas of law you're interested in is particularly important for me to be able to match you with a site that you're going to be uh, comfortable with uh, and or learn more um, about the area you're interested in. So typically I ask students, you know, is are you interested in criminal or civil? And I also ask um, you to give me three choices in order of preference. Um, I don't always match 
you know, exactly what the student wants, but I do my absolute best to try to find them a match um, in one of their three um, choices, starting with the first choice. Um, so along with the application, the student submits their GPA, their transcript, and their resume. Um, then we um, meet on the date that I set, which again, I believe is the 18th, if I recall correctly. Um, and we go over more details about the internship, what it entails, the matching process, things like that. Um, trying to think, Lene, is there anything yes. else that I Another haven't? The question I think people would have is, because this internship class, right. so besides from their placement, oh, good. what yeah. else is happening? Thanks, I, I did forget that. So great question. Um, so there are six, we call them seminars, classes, that happen throughout the semester. Um, I look at those seminars, and, and I hope our interns agree, as kind of a safe place, first and foremost, to share uh, experiences at their respective internships. For example, this semester, we have 10 interns, you know, working at different places like the public defender, the legal defender, the county attorney, the attorney general, several private law firms. Um, and it's really, uh, for me at least, and I'm pretty sure for the students, nice to hear the experiences that they're having. Um, and, and sometimes, you know, we might hear about things that are uh, challenges that they confronted and overcame or would like some advice on. Um, but over all those six meetings um, target different things. So uh, last meeting, for example, um, we went over interview skills um, because as I'm sure most of you would realize for a paralegal interview, um, you're going to be asked certain questions that are specific to being a paralegal, like how do you multitask or uh, what's the worst mistake you've ever made and how did you resolve it? So we kind of think about answers to those questions, a little bit of brainstorming among the group. Um, the next meeting we're going to have, this will actually be our fifth meeting, uh, the students will have revised their resume and prepare to cover a letter for a uh, employer uh, job posting. And we're going to do peer review of each other's resume and cover letter um, to you know, give feedback on whether the uh, resume and or cover letter looks good, has some positives, might need some tweaking or whatnot. Um, I think, oh, we go over job descriptions to look at what skills seem to be consistently um, required by local employers. Um, so yeah, just to sum that up, we have six meetings that are also required as part of the internship. All right, so I'm going to come back to you, Gwen, but this is my first question to the interns. So Gwen had mentioned that one of the benefits of the internship is that you get to gain and apply skills. So I would like each of you to address maybe one or two points of a skill that you gain and one or two that you were able to apply from your being in the program. <clears throat> um, I'm Micah. Hello. Uh, okay, skills that I've been able to use would definitely be um, Using a database, I am with the um, Pima Public Defender's Office right now, and during my law office computerization class, actually, we learned about databases, and, you know, I mean, there are a bunch of different ones, but they basically all kind of look the same, and so while JustSware, which is the, um, what sort of software that we use in the office, is something I had never used before, I got a five minute walkthrough and was kind of thrown in. And because I had taken the class, I actually knew like, oh, okay, I can do this. It's not as scary as it should be, or it could be. And then something that I um, am working on is soft skills. I have to email 
a lot of people and you know i'm used to you know just like texting casually so you know being professional and not like putting emojis and things and you know trying to just sound professional and with you know as everybody knows in emails and in text it's really hard because you don't know how they're taking what you're saying without any like context so it's been a good skill for me to brush up on Great. That's a good good reminder about the emotions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so I've gotten uh, to learn a lot of things. I second like the software. So I'm at the Attorney General Office, the Child and Family Protection Department. So we use legal files to organize everything and we access the Agave <clears throat> Agave database, which is like Superior Court, I guess, uploads all their documents there. So I think it's been good getting familiar with that. And I also think just a general skill of like, not multitasking, because I'm not very good at that, but like keeping lists so that I, I can jump back and forth, because sometimes I'll get an email. I've been doing a lot of uh, redacting and disclosures, and I'll just get a bunch of emails like, with all these different clients. I'm like, Who's, whose lawyer is that? And it's just, and so creating like a spreadsheet with all of the information has been very helpful. Just getting practice organizing my thoughts and not forgetting things. I'm a, I'm going to third what they've been saying about <laughs> computer skills and basic um, or just software knowledge. And I think having kind of a background and taking computerization and, and working with pleading paper and working with um, all of the kind of drafting tools here are very helpful. Um, most of I'm with a family law firm, a solo practitioner, and Almost everything that I've been doing is drafting petitions for dissolutions and motions for modifications for child support and parenting time. Um, so for me, the, the biggest skill personally has been drafting and legal writing. Um, definitely have seen, you know, you get documents from opposing counsel and everybody has a different writing style and the stylistic choices are, are wildly different uh, across the bar, but you start to kind of learn what the judges like. So with spreadsheets for me, um, like Rachel was saying, I use them to kind of track which judges are assigned to which cases and go from there to see, do I need to keep this more brief? Do I need to make this a little more fleshed out? How much are they gonna read it before we actually go to the hearing? Um, and then beyond that, just you know, information management. I'm working on around 16 cases right now, just kind of managing, um, drafting them from beginning and then just drafting things as they need while we go through um so definitely also you know item management task management um and using your computer and your excel and your office and your databases to kind of help you keep track of everything well good so it sounds like from everyone some computer skills have been helpful so everyone definitely needs to take the computerization class yes. <laughs> uh, sounds like a very good skill one thing that gwen also mentioned was being matched so you all were matched with your placement. What have you found uh, either about yourself as a result of the match, matching process? And um, how is that in, in influencing your future plans as a parable? So uh, I, my first choice was um, prosecution um, and criminal law. And Gwen assigned me and matched me with the public defenders. You now I even wrote Gwen an email and was like, is there any possible way that we can do prosecution? Because I was just very against it. And I, I'm very glad that she pushed me to do it. And she, you know, she responded and was like, it's good to know both sides. And um for myself personally, I am I'm learning um stuff that I already kind of knew about myself. Like I just recently read a case that I think was probably one of the hardest cases I've ever um, looked at and uh, turned my stomach definitely and was definitely hard. Um, I was thankful I have an entire floor of people that I could like discuss it with. And uh, for me, I'm still definitely leaning more towards the prosecution, but it's definitely opened up my eyes to be, you know, more receptive of the fact that everybody deserves a defense and um, actually being parts of um, trial prep for certain things and stuff like that. It's just being able to know like certain boundaries for myself. There are cases that I would probably never 
never want to work on and that that's fine and as long as um you tell your superiors that type of stuff then you don't have to go home kind of feeling kind of cruddy and like questioning yourself because you do want to put in your best work that you can and when you have that type of you know conflict inside yourself you're not you're not helping them and it's not helping you and that at the end of the day all i want to do is help people and so for me it's it's a good way to you know open my mind a little and it was needed um one of the questions that came in mike was can you repeat where you are oh i'm at the pima county public defender's office i think uh, so i my first my, my top three choices were family law uh, estate and probate and criminal defense so i'm on the opposite coin of micah um <laughs> i really want to do criminal defense but um i ended up in family law at a with a solo practitioner who works remotely 100 percent of the time so when i first got this I was like yes i love remote work i'm gonna be able to go camping more and get out there and do things and you know but um i realized i don't like remote work as much as i thought i would i really like an office setting did not know that about myself um but at the same time i really really love family law it's a lot more complicated even just your run-of-the-mill divorce is, can be so financially complex and people disagree over the silliest things it feels like when they're in the middle of it. Um, and then also, you know, when there's kids involved, it gets emotional sometimes. It gets, like Micah was saying, it can get difficult to kind of detach from a case. I just had a, a hearing yesterday that was really hard. Um, I didn't like the outcome, so it was hard for me to kind of go home and, and sit with it for a second. but. Um, I think one of the biggest things I'm learning from being in a family farm is kind of dissociating from your own personal feelings about certain situations. My own family background is very complicated. So there are times when a case looks very similar to my upbringing and it's just learning how to take a step back and be like, okay, this is, I have a job here and I have a duty to these, to these clients to make sure that they're getting the best representation possible and that their needs are getting met. And that's what we're here for. And a lot of it is just making sure that, you know, the truth is is getting out, whether we like that truth or not. So um, I am definitely grateful I got placed where I was. Um, I think, as Micah was saying, you know, being open-minded to different placements and fields that you didn't think you would like. Um, I know a lot of us got placed where we wanted to be, but some of us didn't get placed where we wanted to be and seeing everybody's responses to that and what it's been like for them. I have a couple of different directions in mind as well, beyond family law that I'm thinking about. So also talking to other interns, do that, talk to your, talk to your other, <laughs> to your other interns. Some, tips. So, some similar stuff. So I wanted to do immigration law, but there weren't, uh, couldn't find any openings for that. And instead I've been doing uh, juvenile dependency and it's not something I ever, would have picked, but it's been a really good experience and I've learned a lot. And it's interesting, the balance between, sometimes reading everything just feels like numbers and meaningless, and then sometimes I'll come read a police report about something terrible, <laughs> and, and then from reading these really boring medical records, and then at the end, there's like these footprints of like the baby when they're first born, and I'm just like, oh yeah, it's a person, and like, it's kind of like, I don't know, emotional back and forth. Um, but it's been good to kind of, like what Tiffany said, to learn to disassociate yourself a little bit, but also care, but not let it drag you down. So I've, I've yeah, I've been learning a lot. And going back to another question that Gwen mentioned a lot, that it gives you the opportunity to learn soft skills. Um, in terms of office culture, have what kind of things that you've experienced that you think have maybe um, helped you with soft skills, maybe challenged soft skills, um, what do you notice in office culture? Hmm. So um, it's a bit of a, like a shock for me. I'm I'm a, been a stay at home mom for about 14 years now, so anything was going to be really different, you know. Uh, right before, I think in our main um, like meeting, we went over things like you know about interviews and stuff like that. And one of the things was um, you know not, not to gossip and how it's not good to gossip in the in the office and to give a bit about yourself and not like give a whole bunch of stuff and it's it's been interesting to me to see how sometimes some of the um 
lawyers and stuff like that can be a little gossipy. It was definitely something I wasn't expecting. Um, I was, I've been told like, you know, it's the, the cone of, of truth and, and secretism or something with somebody. And I was just like, hmm, wow, that's interesting. But it's also, it's also been fun because, you know, you go in and you think like, oh, everybody's going to be just like, uh, super duper professional all the time. And it's, um, there's, there's fun. Like we had a, a costume contest at my law office the other day. And, um, because of some of the stuff that, um, the cases that we deal with and stuff, it's, it's good to have morale where we can kind of just, you know, we can say it with each other, leave it, you know, cause part of our, our professions is that we have to keep this stuff to ourselves. We can't go home to our families and say, oh, you know, this case was really hard because X, Y, Z. We could just be like, oh, this case was hard. But in the office, you can with certain people. So it's really nice and it's able, it's really nice to just, you know, have a, a community that understands kind of the hardships that you're going through, but also wants to have a little fun at the end of the day. That's a great point. Confidentiality, but somewhat. Yeah. <laughs> I think um, for me, working remote personally, it's been a lot of, I mean, I've been in an office background for most of my career because my background is in education. Um, but man, when communication breaks down a little bit when you're working remote, it's really, really hard to, to kind of dissect what emails are saying. <laughs> um, I think the primary soft skills that I found to be very helpful and that I've been kind of working on developing more with working remote, and particularly in a legal setting, is um, just the task management and being able to do research on your own and self-direct sometimes, because it's really easy to ask your attorney 16,000 questions. And sometimes I do ask him 16,000 questions, but always trying to find the answers first so that when he comes back and says, oh, it should be here. And I'm like, well, I didn't see it there. Can you show me how to do it or show me where to find it? I feel like it leads to a more supportive relationship. and people appreciate you putting in that effort. And I think that silent effort is one of those soft skills that really gets forgotten. Um, you know, if, and then another another one is just learning not to take things personally when they feel like they might be personal. Um, I think that goes hand in hand with not having a gossipy, not being gossipy, not kind of getting too personally involved. Um, I think it's great to have friends in the office and be friendly um, with people, but especially in this field when you're dealing with people's lives and your actions and the actions of the people in your office can ruin somebody's life or really change it for the better. It's really important to have a kind of professional boundary in all aspects of, of work. So Tiffany, you brought in a new element when you were saying working remotely yeah. um, at the office. Um, can you describe in terms of how that impacts your ability to engage in all this Generally, or are you mostly confined to engaging with your supervising attorney? So my supervising attorney is the office. It's, it's just him. <laughs> and he doesn't have another paralegal, so I'm the only paralegal working there right now. Um, it's really limited to emails at this point, emails and text messages and a phone call every once in a while. So it's that's kind of where the self-direction comes into play because if he's in meetings or in appointments or at a hearing and I just have my list of things that I need to get done, um, sometimes I'm not able to reach him right away. So that's kind of where the figuring it out on your own comes into play. And I've heard from other, I know Molly talked about it when she was doing her talk about being a contract paralegal. She also works from home and it is a lot of uh, doing research on your own to to figure it out, you know, write down things that you don't understand or new words that you come across so that you can look it up later. Um, and really just learning to be, independent as a paralegal, which I think is a skill that will kind of help, especially if you're wanting to be an LP, if you're wanting to become a managing paralegal or an administrator at a firm. So. Great. Rachel, how's your experience with the office culture? I think, fortunately, everyone in my office has been really friendly and uh, very helpful. I'm, I think I'm more of a shy person. So at first, uh, my supervisor was just giving me like the same tasks over and over. It was sending reminder emails, which was useful because I had to, I had to like read through all the minutes on like the Agave website. So it actually did, I did learn a lot, but I kind of reached a point where I'm like, okay, I'm reading on something new and I was kind of like, ah. so I finally asked her if I could, you know, if I wanted to do a 
variety of tasks. So it like took some courage to build it up. And at first she's like, no, <laughs> but she's like, I'm like, I'm really, really busy and I don't have time. But then she, uh, she slowly changed her mind and I've been kind of flexible and so sometimes do something repetitive, but sometimes do something new. So I think learning to be a little more assertive and also flexible is in the office. Oh, that's an excellent point because we do talk about that for paralegals being able to speak up. Mm -hmm. So um, they won't know if you don't speak up. Mm -hmm. So great showing, especially like you're saying, being more shy in general and speak up for yourself. Um, one of the things that Gwen mentioned is that, you know, sometimes it's the, um, you might get a, uh, an offer uh, after your internship, but some places just don't have the resources to hire folks. Um, have you guys, do you have those, have you engaged in those discussions at your placement or, or not? <clears throat> um, I have not had like a personal um, conversation about whether or not I would, um, what that would look like, although it has been mentioned, um, you know, for off the side, like um, Deanna, my supervisor will be like, well, you know, if, if you do end up staying on, and so it seems like it could be an option if that's something I wanted to do and it would, um, I would definitely have a conversation with her if that was something I would want to do. Um, for me, it's I don't want to continue on there, which is which is fine. But uh, it does seem like it would be an option. It is not an option for me. Um, so being a solo practitioner, he doesn't actually need a paralegal. He just transitioned to being a solo practitioner. He wasn't a multi partner firm um, before that, and he switched this year. So he had a paralegal when he started. Um, and then it just kind of realized that there's there's not enough. He's not able to take on enough cases to justify having one. Yeah, yeah. certainly. That is part of it. Even though we say paralegals can save money, but sometimes um, until they get their build their practice up enough, mm -hmm. you can't take on the savings yet. So, um, so that's something that definitely not to take personally from mm -hmm. your internship if you don't get an offer at the end because there's a multitude of reasons why that. Can happen. Yeah, at, at my office, there's a set number of positions that are that they need, and right now they're all full. But sometimes it does change over. So I'll, I'm also not sure if I would want to work there, but I'm I'm keeping my my ears open to see if if a position opens. Um, So what are your, um, any tips that you would um, offer for someone who's just signing up to be an intern? Pay attention in class? Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely pay attention, pay attention in class. In class. Um, be willing to ask, you know, for, for help. I feel like um, I'm lucky where um, there's like three full floors that are all kind of mismatched together and it's very much like a team thing. And um, even the attorneys, are coming and asking each other for help. So like, don't feel like, oh, I'll look stupid or something like that. Like, even if it's something, you know, super simple, you're there to learn. So don't, don't be shy about it. That is an excellent, excellent tip. So worth repeating, <laughs> don't be afraid to ask questions. You are there to learn. That is one of the purposes of an internship is to give people, students the opportunity to learn. So thank you, that's an important tip. I think don't. I have two major tips. Like, don't be afraid to to speak up if you feel like you're not getting the kind of work that you're looking for. Or you're not getting enough variety, like Rachel was saying, or um, you know. And also, don't be afraid to reach out to Gwen if you need help, kind of communicating something or, or figuring something out. Um, there is a support system here, and your attorneys are there to support you. Um, sometimes. It just needs to be said. So don't be afraid to to you know be like, hey, I've been doing this for a long time. Can I switch something else? Or hey, I haven't, um, you know, I finished this a few days ago. Is there anything else that I can work on today? Um, and then I think my second kind of major tip really is to go into it with an open mind and and not assume that you know exactly what field you want to go into or exactly what kind of work you're looking for. Um, I think. The internship is a great opportunity to learn what you do want to do, but also to learn what you don't want to do um, and kind of get a feel. You know, I have a list 
of attorneys in the back of my notebook that I use for work. Like I would want to work for this person. I would not want to work for that person. And same thing for, for judges. Like I don't want to go in front of this one. I do want to go in front of that one. And, um, you know, just to, to keep an open, open mind, open heart about what your life is going to look like as a paralegal and what field of law you want to go into and also what your office culture and what your office setting that you're looking for is going to look like. So thank you. That was uh, that's a great point. Because one of the things we to remind people, this is an internship class. So that means you do have when as a resource, you're not just relying on what's happening in the office. So you get to bring those kind of concerns and support definitely to, to win. Uh, we had two questions coming up. So um, Sarah, we had your hand raised first. Do you want to ask your question? Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I, this is really general and not very well <laughs> formulated, but do you feel overall like the tasks you're given are sort of appropriate for where you are as a paralegal in terms of your education and experience? Are they too mundane? Are they too complicated? Or, you know, do you feel well equipped to handle what's given you? Do you feel bored? Do you feel stressed? Like, I don't know, that's kind of broad, but I'm sure that you can work with my question. <laughs> Just give me your overall impressions if you if you don't mind. Thank you. Um, so uh, I'm not gonna lie, there are definitely days where I, I feel bored, um, but I've mentioned to my supervisor about it. Um, I, 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 you know, just said, you know, I, I, I wanted to do more hands-on type things. And um, she expressed to me, I just wanted to make sure you weren't doing anything like secretarial and you were having like really cool and interesting things that you were doing. And I told her, I appreciate that. And that is great. I still just want to, you know, learn as much as I can. And um, in reality, if I do get hired on just about anywhere, I am going to have to do kind of boring and mundane things. And so that's been good. Um, I did have to help prep trial files, which I felt like I had no idea what necessarily that meant. But thankfully, you know, I was walked through it. And um, one of the paralegals, I feel like networking is very, very important. And the paralegal that I was working with, she had like this nice little like cheat sheet that she called it and that she printed out. And she's like, I can make you a copy of this. And it's literally like, preparing for trial, here's what you do. And it's like seven pages of just tips and everything. So I created a little file myself of like cheat sheets and have been writing them down. So um, there's definitely been times where I feel it's a little boring, but I mean, that's that's probably, you know, how it's gonna be when I do get hired on somewhere. And um, I myself, um, we have our own like research um, researchers. So none of the paralegals really do it, but, um, I feel like that would be something that if I were given the chance to through the classes that I've taken, I felt like I would be um, okay at doing it if I needed to. Those tip sheets are important. Yeah. yeah they are. Your notes. <laughs> Shout out to the hearsay checklist. Oh, right. <laughs> I still use that. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think I've gotten lucky in that I started out doing more basic things like you know very simple requests for production very simple discovery requests notice of appearances things like that um and then as the weeks have gone on i've progressed to doing harder things you know petitions for dissolutions that are complex um with you know multiple kids involved a little bit of domestic violence so um for for me personally i've been able to kind of grow with the work in a way um and there, like Mike was saying, there are days where it feels like there's nothing to do and it's just a very quick one and done, you know, standard NOA, I mean, notice of appearance, affidavit of minor children and move on. Um, and there are some days where I spend three and a half hours trying to draft one petition for dissolution that is just escaping me because it's, there's a complicated tax thing or there's a million accounts involved. Um, so it's definitely a variety. And I, I do think that's how it is real world as well. It's, you know, it's not always going to be 
hustle and bustle, but at the same time, I'm kind of glad it's not because there are days where I just need the break. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd say um, it's been a little more mundane than I would want, but I think part of that is just because there's like a learning curve and there's like a, a lot of things like structural things I have to learn before I can get to something more meaty. Like, like there's all the pilot docs, we use like all these standardized formats for like just about any document you draft. And so it took so long just to figure out how to like, there's all these steps you have to go through just to get it to like, like, like import and like, um, and so it's just kind of unavoidable that there's gonna be a lot of mundane, just logistical things. And I think also the office, just those positions, there's a lot of it is, cause they're like, we're like supporting the attorneys that like are representing the state you know, to see if the child should be removed from the parent's home. And so uh, there is just a lot of like, I don't know, basic paperwork and a little bit of bureaucratic stuff. And it's, it's kind of just, it's kind of unavoidable. That's what, that's what, ha and it has to be done and someone has to do it. So, yeah. but it's, I still learned a lot. Those are great points. It's not always going to be exciting. <laughs> <laughs> that's nature of law. Chris, um, you have your hand up. Want to ask your question? Uh, yeah, thank you. Actually, I have two questions. Uh, one is for uh, uh, Ms. Gorbett. Um, let's see. Oh, you guys are fine. <laughs> <laughs> just... The Red Sea part in. <laughs> okay, I see you hiding in the background. Uh, all right. Um, no, of them just shine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, you mentioned uh, the number, the items that you wanted uh, sent to you, uh, the the GPA and the resume and the stuff. And right. my question is, do you, uh, can we send them all at once, or do you, is it okay to send like some? And how how do you want that done? Okay, so the next thing, for example, I'll just use you as an example, if you don't mind, Chris, is you would send me an email that says. I'm interested in applying for the internship and I can attend the first meeting on the 18th. Okay. Then I'm going to send you a list of items, which includes the items that you mentioned. And okay. I, I do prefer them all at once. And okay. you've got a couple of weeks. What is today? The second. Yeah. So, you know, I tried to give enough lead time for folks to, to get that pulled together. Um, the application itself is really short. It's like, page and a half, I think. Um, you know, it's information that you don't necessarily have to look up other than your GPA if you don't know it. Um, and getting a transcript, an unofficial transcript off the Pima website is fairly easy. I give students directions how to do that in case they're not familiar with how to do that. So um, to answer your specific question, I give you a list. I think it's four or five items maybe take you an hour um, if you don't have your resume um, or, and not you personally, Chris, but any student, if they don't have their resume uh, ready, you know, I, I give a, a source you can take a look at to try to get something put together. It doesn't have to be perfect, but that resume and the application is shared with the potential uh, intern site. Okay. Uh, Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you. That, yeah. One point with resume. Um, doesn't uh, Pima offer from career services some resume um, yeah. writing services that they can take advantage of? Yeah, good point. Yeah, the uh, Career Cafe I know has a couple of events planned, but even just going to the um, student tab on my Pima, there, there's so much information, it's almost overwhelming. but uh, it, there's templates available, there's suggestions available. Um, one of the things I mentioned earlier is uh, we do revise the resume and that's because we want to include the internship and all the great skills that were learned um, as part of the internship. So you're ready to go, so to speak, uh, and apply for, for jobs when you graduate or before you graduate. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, my second question is uh, to the uh, the paralegals. And, and I guess I want to know, do you find that your supervising attorney um, has had a, a training plan in mind before you walked in the door? That's a good question. Yeah. yeah. Um, at 
um, the defender's office, the woman who I interviewed with, although Deanna was in the interview as well, she ended up um, leaving. Um, she went to the dark side, as they call it, and she's across the street now. <laughs> but um, Deanna is, um, she's um, technically, I guess, not even, uh, she's not an attorney, she's a legal secretary. And she told me when um, we set it up, you know, bear with me, I'm, I'm learning as you learn. And so it's, it's a little bit, I've been floated out a little, a little bit, I feel like, which is fine though. And um, it's, that's one of the reasons why I kind of feel like some days I don't really know what I'm, I'm doing. Um, but um, it made me feel a little bit, little bit better because, you know, she was learning as I did. So I didn't feel too low. Thank you. Yeah, definitely not. No, um, it's whoa. From my experience, from from what I've heard of talking to some other interns, um, it's more of a baptism by fire situation. <laughs> you go in and they, I like I pers I'm given things as they come in. Um, so every anything that he doesn't have time to do or that he needs um, needs to do or that is you know. Usually when we get a new case in, I'm the one that starts the filing. So I'll start with the notice of appearance, the affidavit of minor children, the petition for dissolution, and do the financial affidavits. So um, my training plan has really just been throwing me into what I would be doing if I were working as a, as a paralegal at the family law firm, which I think for this field is probably a better way to go than having a, a baby steps training plan. Um, just because it never, I mean, when it gets busy, it kind of feels like you're back in that same baptism by fire situation because everything has to be done quickly and you're still seeing new situations and you're like, oh man, I don't know what to do with this. I need to research this, but I also only have half an hour to research it. And it feels exactly the same as when it was your first day. So it's kind of like this continuing cycle of, um, at least in my experience, you know, hmm feeling confused and then feeling comfortable and then getting something really challenging and feeling confused again and then getting comfortable. But as you go, you're growing with that because less and less things are gonna be as challenging and the things that are challenging are getting more and more complicated. So that's uh, You, you that's sound fun. like you're weathering it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's been good. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> so uh yeah she didn't have a structured plan when i came it's kind of just like as things came up and starting with something simple we it, we have built up a little bit but um yeah there wasn't really a specific plan because because you can't control like there's sometimes where she's like mm -hmm. she wanted to like teach me how to do like a subpoena or something but there was no need for it so you kind of just have to wait for it to come up mm -hmm. I, I guess I want to respond to that too, and I appreciate the honesty and, and the uh, experiences that these interns that are here have had. And and I think um, I'm not surprised by anything they said because I think it's the nature of a law office that things come up and some things are due very quickly, understandably short deadlines, and so it's trial by fire, as Tiffany said. Um, but yeah, I don't want students to think they're going to go into this with a formal internship training. Um, that's not how this is set up. It is more of a, you go in and whatever work they can give you or expose you to. I also want to follow up uh, uh, several, uh, well, at least two, well, maybe all of you have said, you know, that they had to be, in my words, assertive. And, and say, hey, I've done this activity or this task for two weeks now and, and I'm ready to move on. That's really important too, because you know the sites every semester or how, how, ever, how often they take an intern, they don't know that intern, right? So they have to kind of get to know that intern, get to know their skills, whether it's legal skills and, and soft skills and then go from there and so it's a two-way street i guess is what i'm saying um but i'm not surprised at all to hear that there's really no i don't know if any of the sites that at least i've been involved with in the past three to four years that have a formal training 
you know, it's, it's not like an IBM or, a, you know, some big company where they have a formal internship program. Right. Thank some you. Some companies start to work for them and they have onboarding. But right. For, for the internship, actually that brings up another question. How long is the internship? Oh, good question. Yeah, I did forget to mention that, so I'm glad you. So it's one semester. It's uh, either spring or fall. We don't offer summer internships, and it's 150 hours. So students can can do a variety of things. Um, I have one intern this semester that just finished. So she did like 15, I think it averaged out to maybe 15 hours a week. So she got done, you know, a little over halfway through the semester. Um, but an average uh, would be 10 hours a week. Have you had students who've taken an internship twice? No. And I'm not sure, you know, I don't, if that came up, if I haven't thought that far ahead, but no, mm -hmm. I have not. <laughs> Any other questions from the audience? Uh, Liam. Go ahead and give me Hi, uh, I just wanted more information um, for students who decide to seek out their own internship site. Okay, so yeah, good question. Uh, we hadn't covered that yet, so I'm glad you asked it. Yeah, students are welcome uh, to seek out their own internship site. You know, maybe you have uh, a friend or family member that is a lawyer, works in a law office, and, and knows um, a law office or government agency that's willing to take uh, you on. And so um, you would just let me know that. In fact, that is one of the questions on the application. Um, not only do I ask students to rank in order of priority their preferences, but then there's a, another question that asks, would you prefer to find your own internship site? So. Once the student finds their own internship site, uh, then I would have to communicate with the site to make sure the site is willing to, um, you know, supervise the student, but also um, to do two reviews of the student. Um, they fill out, I guess I should say this, the, the intern site itself, the supervising site, fills out, it's, it's a fairly, you know, I don't want to say long, but multi-page um, application that talks about the areas of law the student's going to work in and the types of activities um, that they're going to perform. Are they going to draft pleadings? Are they going to do legal research? Are they going to go to court, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so again, to sum up, uh, students absolutely can find their own site. It's just a matter of me communicating with them and making sure that they're on board to do the two student evaluations and to provide enough uh, activities that are appropriate for our students. I, uh, maybe along the same lines, has anyone changed internships once they were placed that they've ever switched to another placement? I've had that happen where students uh, ended the internship, but it's, it's very rare and, and I, try to caution students that once they commit to their internship, so once they're interviewed, and I use the term, you know, loosely hired, um, you're making a commitment. Um, you know, the, um, the intern site has made a commitment to assign, you know, their personnel, which obviously costs them time and money to supervise you. And so, you know, typically, students don't stop an internship. Um, again, this is a four month commitment. Um, it's a learning opportunity. If there are issues, um, you've heard from some of the interns tonight that I'm available to kind of be a go between. I mean, I, I first encourage the intern, of course, to work on the issue, if any, uh, between themselves and the intern site, because if they were employed by that employer, they'd have to work that out as an employee. But certainly I'm always kind of a backup for that. So again, in my experience in the past three or four years, I've had 
a couple instances, you know, where it was kind of rocky. Um, I had one withdrawal because of a medical issue. Uh, but again, you know, this is a commitment made by the student, but also by the intern site. So it's something to take seriously. And it's not something that can be, oh, I don't, I decided I don't like, you know, prosecution. Can I switch? Well, the answer would be no. <laughs> We have time, I think, for one more question and then a final word of advice from each of the panelists. Is there another question? Or maybe while you're thinking about it, I can have the panelists give their final tips. All right, I don't see hands raised yet, so we'll go around the panel. And you guys want to give your final tips, words of advice? <clears throat> um, final tips, words of advice. Um, I think at the end of the day, just um, open mind mindedness and you know a, a willingness to to learn. Like I said earlier, you're there to learn, and uh, you know, kind of be like a sponge. You know, just try and soak it all in. Um, don't be afraid to ask questions. You know, and you know, just uh, have fun with it a little bit. It doesn't have to be so serious. <laughs> You have plenty of time in your career to feel stressed and feel overwhelmed and feel like the immense burden of a potential mistake. This is the time to make your mistakes. This is the time to kind of embrace that part of the journey. So don't be afraid if you're not sure about something. You have someone that's supervising you every step of the way. If you're asked to draft something you don't know how to draft, just do your best at it and be like, hey, can I get some feedback on this? I'm really unsure about all of this. but. Um, you know, give it a shot. You're, you'll probably be surprised about by how much you can actually do on your own. Um, it takes confidence. Don't right? underestimate yourself. Yeah, confidence. Yeah, as you as you go through it. Pretty much, you'd say the same things. I think, um, like what Tiffany said, that you know, don't be afraid to do it. And what's great about this is like. You're right now. You're not the one who's ultimately responsible. I mean, even as paralegal, so as a supervised attorney, but it's like, it's. I was like really stressed. I was expecting perfection from myself when I first got there, but it's like, no, I'm. I'm just here to learn, and uh, yeah, there's there's someone who is checking over my work, so I don't need to be afraid. Use the highlighting tool. <laughs> if you have something you don't, you're not sure about something, just highlight it in yellow. Be like, everything I'm not sure about is highlighted in yellow. Just let me know. The whole page. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, uh, my final tip, you're going to be surprised, I'm joking, is to take the internship and, and round up all your friends. Uh, really, to me, it's a win-win situation. Um, it's a way to experience, you know, real life as a paralegal. Uh, is it going to be ideal or perfect? No. You know, no, no paralegal job or teaching job is perfect. There's, there's highs, there's lows, there's tasks that are boring, there's tasks that are challenging, there's tasks that are scary. But this is a safe place, you know, the internship to do that. Um, you know, again, just to summarize, there's so much uh, um, you can take away from an interview, working on your soft skills, working on your legal knowledge, determining whether or not this is a field you want to work in or avoid, um, making contacts, um, networking, that was a great term I couldn't pull out earlier, uh, networking and making contacts so that when you do start to look for a job, hey, could you let me know I'm interested in working for, you know, the county attorney, can you let me know when there's an opening? Um, Another example I could quickly give is um, a student intern um, was told that when she applied for the in, or the opening for a paralegal, that one of her, I guess I'll call them coworkers, was willing to help her, you know, do her application. A lot of times there's certain keywords that employers are looking for. And so, you know, even that one contact of a person that she worked with being willing to look over her shoulder and make sure her application was uh, hitting the keywords or concepts or skills that she needed to make stand out to potentially get an interview. I mean, that that's worth 
a lot just right there. So again, my my uh, piece of advice is do the internship. It's worth it. So thank you all so much for your time. Um, I've gotten thank yous from the um, on chat. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. It was really valuable. We are at time. Um, Tiffany, if you want to just close out with the announcements. Yep, I do have a couple of announcements. First of all, thank you guys, all of you, for coming and for, for asking. Um, we have, we're wrapping up the semester. We're, we're almost at the end. Um, next week, we're going to have Brianna Oliver. She was rescheduled to next week. Um, she is the first vice president of the Paralegal Association. Um, so come on virtually or come in person to meet her and um, get some information about the benefits of association. She'll be talking about the APA and also about NALA. Um, and then on the 18th, we have a special event. It's a Friday. So that is 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. We're going to be doing a tour at the federal courthouse. Um, we were able to meet with one of the magistrate judges there, and he so kindly extended an offer to, to kind of show us around and let us watch a few things. So we're going to go through the life of a criminal case. We feel like, I don't know, there's a little bit of a, a, a there's a huge interest in criminal, criminal law among the student body and only two criminal law classes. So we wanted to kind of extend the opportunities. If you're interested in criminal law, interested in a federal courthouse, it's beautiful. I walked in the first time and I was awestruck. And I was like, oh my, what? Um, so definitely check it out. Parking is free, really easy. It's in the back of the building. Um, and you can RSVP for that on Pima Engage. I'll put the link um, in, uh, if you wanna put your um, emails in the chat privately to Charlie Martin, um, we'll go ahead and send you a direct invite if you'd like. Um, and then on the 30th, we have our officer election meeting for spring 2023. Um, those nominations are gonna open tonight at 7 p.m. Also on Pima Engage, the entire a uh, roster of members should be getting a link to nominate if you are interested in that. I'll also send a link over to Gwen if she wants to add it to the announcements for next week. Um, it's leadership experience, organizational experience. We have four officers right now. So president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer are going to be open. Um, you should have a little bit of seed money for next semester. So keep an eye out for that. Um, definitely an opportunity to kind of expand on what we've been, what we've been, what we've been doing here. And um, then on December 17th, so this is right right at the end of the semester, it's a Saturday, there is a special event. We cannot say much yet, we're still planning, um, but it should be fun. It should be gloriously cheesy. Um, so stay in town, keep your Saturday night open. It is gonna be a, an afternoon to evening event. Um, yeah, opportunity to you know, socialize and, and celebrate. We're going to be honoring the graduates, honoring some of the interns. Um, you know, and we'll also do our officer announcements at that that little shindig. So, um, if you guys have any questions at all, feel free to email us, shoot us a message on any of our social medias. Um, yeah, yay! <laughs> thank you to Micah and to Rachel for coming thank and talking you. about their experiences as coming. interns, and thank you to Gwen for coming and talking yeah, about the absolutely. internship. Uh, program. We'll go ahead and put the the link to, or I'm sorry, the information about um, the process and our about page on Pima Engage as well. Oh, great. Okay. So, yeah. Thank you guys. Have a good night. Be safe. Thanks. All of the above. Great. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Thank you.